Welcome back to Decked Out. On today's episode, we are joined by Peachy Pop Cosplay and one of our local L2 judges, V. And each player has brought to the table a deck built around one of the newer mechanics, Background. Thank you to our sponsor, Cool Stuff Inc. And now our new sponsor, Mana Traders. But more on them later in the video. That's enough from us. Let's go ahead and meet the players. Hi, I'm Peachy of Peachy Pop Cosplay, and today I'm playing Karlek, Fury of Avernus. So my game plan today is going to be doing many combats and big combats. Uh, and because of my background, Agent of Shadow Thieves, uh, Karlek will hopefully be a force to be reckoned with, with both Death Touch and Indestructible. And uh, hopefully today I'll get to see my wild mage sister, Delina. Hi, my name's V, and I am going to be playing Imowen, Mystic Trickster. Now, I'm always a fan of card advantage in the command zone, but I also get to choose a background. And the background that I'm gonna choose today is Far Traveler. Now, this lets me blink creatures on my end step. And that's really great with cards that say take the initiative because I am looking to turbo through the Undercity as many times as possible. I'm MTG Nerdgirl, and today I'm going to be playing Ellen Harbury's Busybody. My deck is going to be making a bunch of tokens that Ellen can use to get more threats and find answers. And then I'll even be able to turn Ellen herself into a threat with Cultist of the Absolute by making her really big and using those tokens to pay the tax. I'm Veggie Wagon, and my commander is Val, Candlekeep Researcher. It taps for mana that I can't use to cast spells from my hand, but that's perfect for my background, Raised by Giants, which is going to help me to produce even more mana, and with the help of something like Future Sight, I'm going to be able to play a bunch of spells on the top of my library, and maybe even go infinite. We've partnered with Mana Traders to help you get into Commander Online. With their new Commander Rental Package, you can get any of the cards that you'd need for any Commander deck at a very affordable rate. And with this partnership, we'll now be able to provide more games with you guys on Magic Online and even host Commander Magic Online Nights in our Discord. Make sure to use our code in the description to get an additional 10% off of that package. But that's all for now. Let's get into the game. Welcome to the table. Let's roll. Let's see who goes first. Four. <laughs> Eleven. Lucky 13. Drag. Hey. Oh my gosh. Draw my card. Play a dream root cascade tapped and pass the turn. Fantastic. I will draw me a card. I'm going to play myself a mountain. You know what? I'm going to actually do a whole lot of nothing with that mountain. I'm just going to pass. All right. Okay. I am going to start off with a tapped prairie stream that is in Russian and past the turn. Russian, it came in tapped, it seems pretty slow to me. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Many puns <laughs> later. I'm gonna just play a tapped shine, sh <laughs> <laughs> shine shadow snarl. <laughs> shine shadow. I'm gonna go ahead and just play a tapped shine shadow snarl and pass the turn. I'm going to play a farce, and I'm going to tap two for Zimone, Quandrix Prodigy. Uh, I can pay one in Tapper to put a land from my hand onto the battlefield tapped, and I can pay four Tapper, draw a card, and if I control eight or more lands, I draw two instead. Pass. That's some value. Mm -hmm. I'm going to draw myself a card. I'm going to play a Castle Embrith. Uh, it enters tapped unless I control a mountain, which I do. And let's start it off with... Tapping two for Kedis, Ember Claw Familiar. Whenever a commander I control deals damage to a opponent, uh, it deals that much damage to each other opponent. So you're all getting some. <laughs> and he's just a one-one though, so he's gonna hang out right here and he's gonna be a good friend later. And I'll pass. Big Hammer becomes triple Big Hammer. Yeah, <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> no one will be spared. <laughs> I'll go ahead and draw a card. Uh, I'm going to play this Sea of Clouds, and I know it's early, but I want to make sure that no one dies before I get to play it untapped. Right, right. Well, I mean, we might, we might be. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to pay two for an Arcane Signet, and then I'm going to pay one for a Ranger's Hawk. Uh, it is a 1-1 one, one flyer. I can pay three, tap, and tap another untapped creature I control to venture into the dungeon, but I can only do it as a sorcery. And with that, I'm going to pass the turn. All right, I'm going to go ahead and tap two for a Renog Rider's Chaplain. When Renog enters the battlefield or leaves the battlefield, each opponent may investigate. Each opponent who doesn't investigate loses one life. You investigate X times where X is at the number of players plus one 
that decided to investigate. So each of you guys can decide uh, to investigate or not, and I'll get that many clue. Um, I think I could uh, I could be served by getting a clue, so I I will also. See, I don't know that I need a clue. There we go. I'm gonna big, stand big my big ground. <laughs> So two of you guys made clues. That means I will get three clues and I will pass the turn after that. I'm going to play Yavamaya Coast. I'm going to tap two and sacrifice this clue token to draw a card and I'm going to pass the turn. Great. I'm glad I'm not the only one off to a slow-ish start here. <laughs> I'm uh, feeling a bit, uh, bit behind. Well, I guess I'll play myself a swamp and I might as well just set some stuff up for later. Uh, let's tap two to play my commander background, uh, which is agent of the shadow thieves. Uh, commander creatures I own have whatever this creature attacks a player. If no opponent has more life than that player, put a 1-1 one, one counter on the creature and it gains death touch and indestructible. I was just setting myself yeah. up to to skirt that. Yeah, see, exactly. You circumnavigated it. You called my bluff here. <laughs> the biggest of thinkies. No, girl, you have quite a lot of clues. So I think I will have to imbue you with a curse of opulence. Enchant player. Whenever enchanted player is attacked, create a gold token. Each opponent attacking that player does the same. So now, nerd girl's pockets will jingle with gold that we can all have. That's interesting, because I also have a curse in hand. Now I think I have a target for it. Probably. <laughs> I will probably pay for my crimes. Um, and I think that that's about all I can do at this exact moment, so I'm gonna pass. You gave me the curse and didn't even attack me? I could- I can't. Wow. My lizard, what he'll a, be a, harmed. <laughs> <laughs> what a bank error in V's favor. I know. I'm gonna play a command tower. I'm gonna pay four for an Aarakocra sneak. Uh, it is a 1-4 flying. When it enters the battlefield, I take the initiative. Let's get the dungeon ball rolling. I I'm going to venture into the Undercity, enter into the secret entrance, which gives me a basic land from my deck. I'm going to search for a Wastes, which may surprise some of you. I would love a gold token, but I don't want to give Peachy a gold token. So I'm going to go ahead and just say pass. Let's go ahead and start with the planes, and we are just going to play a monologue tax. It's an enchantment. This is whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, I create a treasure token of my own. So that'll just go over here with my now piling up of enchantments. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will pass the turn. Play a reliquary tower, no max hand size. With a Zimon, that seems pretty good. Yeah, I think at this point, I'm just gonna pay four and cast my commander, Val Candlekeep Researcher. Two, three vigilance, tap, add an amount of colorless mana equal to its toughness. That mana cannot be spent to cast spells from your hand. Only taps for three. I'll pass the turn. No big deal. Yeah. No problem, I'm sure. No way that I can change that. Playing myself a nice little mountain. I think what's good for me to do is spend another turn uh, setting up for my eventual cool guy moment. Um, I'm going to tap two and just put out a lightning greaves. Um, let's stick it right here on uh, my, my, my nice elemental lizard man. So he will have haste and shroud. So nobody look at him. He's shy. He will be embarrassed. Um, and I will tap these two and let's get rid of this clue token and I will draw a card from that and I will pass my turn. All right, I will untap. In my upkeep, because I have the initiative, I am going to venture into the Undercity. In this case, I am actually going to scry two. All right, I'm pretty good for colors, so I'm gonna play this wastes and maybe we'll see if it becomes relevant. Uh, but for now, pay two mana and cast Dungeon Delver, uh, which is a background. It says commander creatures I own have room abilities of dungeons I own trigger an additional time. I really hope that Dungeon Delver sticks around because if everything goes well, doubling up my room abilities is going to pop off. Now I don't have my commander out, but actually that's what I'm gonna cast next. Imowen Mystic Trickster. She is a 2-3 with Ward 2. At the beginning of your end step, if I have the initiative, draw a card. Draw another card if I've completed a dungeon. And then, of course, I can choose a background. And because you played two spells per turn, I'm going to go ahead and get a treasure with my monologue tax. 
Regretfully, I have to allow that, but I think this is gonna be a real good turn for me. So I'd like to move to my end step. Draw a card because I have the initiative and then pass the turn. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start with a talisman. Uh, it allows me to make colorless or I can ping myself for damage to make white and or black. I'm gonna go ahead and tap it for colorless, snarl and my treasure. And we're going to play a smuggler's share. It's another enchantment. This is at the beginning of each end step. I draw a card if an opponent drew two cards that turn. Uh, and I can make a treasure for each opponent who had two or more lands enter the battlefield that turn. That is going to be my turn. I'm just going to sit and hang out. Yes. A lot of monetary uh, stuff happening over there. Someone's playing death and taxes over <laughs> here. Heavy on the taxes. I'm going to pay two for Blackblade Reforged. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one for each land I control, which is four. I can pay three to equip to legendary or seven if it's not. I, I guess I'll try this. Um, I'm just going to tap Val for two mana. And then I'm going to pay two and cycle Vizier of Tumbling Sands. Um, so I'll draw a card and I'll get to untap Val. Okay. I get to draw an extra card because you'll be drawing two this turn. Yes. Ah! Well, you know what, then? I'm going to uh, tap Val again. I have a total of four. I'm going to use three of that mana to equip Zimone with Blackblade Reforged. No, that's stupid. Uh, I'm just going to equip Blackblade Reforged to Val uh, and then pass my turn with that without a land drop. Yay! <laughs> I was like, man, I am... I'm a little cooked if I don't get another land right now. Rub it in veg Veggie's face, <laughs> why don't you? <laughs> oh, look at my beautiful mountain right on top where I was hoping it would be. Oh, beautiful. So, uh, I'm, I'm the one at three. I know you are. You are a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit behind in, in lands. I'm going to tap all five of these and cast my commander. Uh, and my commander is Karlak, Fury of Avernus. She's a 5-4. Whenever I attack, if it's the first combat phase of that turn, untap all attacking creatures. They gain first strike until end of turn. And after this phase, there will be an additional combat. I am going to go ahead and move my Lightning Greaves upon Karlak. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter who I swing at, because you're all going to, I guess, well, I guess one of you will become swung at. Uh, oh, if no opponent has more life than that player. So I can't swing at you, actually. Hey, <laughs> that, that paid off. Does Galaxy help. brain. <laughs> I have a huge incentive to attack the player with the most life. Um, but luckily, because of my little lizard pal, I uh, will also be able to spread the damage around to everybody uh, and still get all those benefits. I will send you over to uh, Veggie. Um, since no opponent has more life than you, she will also get a counter on her. So I'll put that right here. Yeah, so that's six coming to me. Yep. I am not blocking. Oh, yeah. Death touch and indestructible. She is a, a yeah. murder machine right now. <laughs> yes. I will take six and y'all will take six. Yes. So let's go ahead and do my second combat. My uh, my cup do, in fact, flow with over in terms of combat now. I feel like I kind of have to just run it back. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Veggie, I'm sorry. So, Veggie, uh, I'm going to put a counter on this. And uh, she will be tapped this time because uh, she it is not my first combat. I will swing another, this time seven. I, I probably shouldn't take 13 commander <laughs> damage in a turn. Uh, I, I think I have to block with Zimone at this point. I understand I uh, will probably get cracked back for this a little bit, but all she knows how to do is swing. I, she, she has one job. I think she does so. more damage than everything else on the table, so your crack bag is still less. Oh, yeah. So uh, I think that that is my turn then. I'm gonna untap uh, and then upkeep, create a treasure token. But wait, my room abilities trigger an additional time. So I actually get two treasure tokens. Double ah, hammy. Ah, ah. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna first off play my land for a turn. It's an island. We're gonna do a lot of things this turn. It's gonna be great. So I'm gonna pay two and I'm gonna sacrifice these two treasures. Saravox Tome. Uh, it's an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, I take the initiative. And while I already have it, I do get to venture into the dungeon. We'll get to that in a second, though. Uh, I can tap the tome for a colorless mana. If I have the initiative, I instead add two mana. And then I can pay three, tap, exile cards from the top of my library until I exile a non-land card. 
I may cast that card without paying its mana cost, but I can only activate that if I've completed a dungeon. I take the initiative, which means that I'm going to venture into the Undercity one more time. We are going to create a 4-1 black skeleton creature with menace, and I'm going to do that twice because of my background. Pay a white and two for White Plume Adventurer. When it enters the battlefield, I take the initiative. We'll get to that. And at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, I untap a creature I control. If I've completed a dungeon, untap all creatures I control instead. I take the initiative and I get to do a lot of stuff twice. Yeah, mm -hmm. because this is the last part of the Undercity. So I'm going to reveal the top 10 cards of my library. Put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. It gains hexproof until my next turn. And so I get to do that twice. I'm going to get a treasure token for your second spell. I have to choose Brago here. Mm. This is some spicy stuff. Brago is a 2-4 flyer, legendary creature spirit, noble. Whenever Brago King Eternal deals combat damage to a player, exile any number of target non-land permanents I control, then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. I'm about to complete a lot of dungeons. <laughs> a lot of them real fast double. Yes. We're going to do that again. Another mm -hmm. one. Why Another not? one. The answer has to be Radiant Solar. Uh, so it'll enter with three plus one plus one counters. Radiant Solar is a three six with flying and lifelink. Whenever Radiant Solar or another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, venture into the dungeon. Now, notably, you can only go into the Undercity when you uh, venture into the Undercity. Uh, so I have to choose Tomb of Annihilation. I will venture into the dungeon. Uh, so each player loses one life and that triggers twice. I'm going to cast another background from the command zone this time, Far Traveler. Commander creatures I own have, at the beginning of my end step, exile up to one target tapped creature I control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Move to combat. And I am going to hit Peachy <gasps> no. for one. It's flying. Oh, <laughs> I was really like, wait, oh. <laughs> Uh, well, I can't block that, so I'm going to take one. Uh, and then I'm going to move to end step. Far Traveler will trigger, uh, so I will exile Aarakocra Sneak, and it'll enter the battlefield. I will take the initiative. Each player loses two life unless they discard a card, and that happens twice. I think I need these. I'm going to lose two life twice. Same. I think I will discard one and then take two. Imowen is going to trigger, and I have the initiative and have completed a dungeon, Woo! so I get to draw two cards. Uh, I will draw for your second card for turn. Also, Radiant Solar triggers, uh, so it ventures into the dungeon again. Each player loses two life unless they sacrifice an artifact, a creature, or a land, and that happens twice. I can't do that either, so I'll take another four. <laughs> I'll sack two clues. Oh, I kind of need all my artifacts and lands and creatures, so I will take four. I'm going to take four, and it's your go. I'm going to go ahead and start with a Castle Arden Veil. I'm going to play Halo Fountain for one white. I can tap it, untap, target creature, create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen, two white and tap, uh, untap two creatures that I control and draw a card, or for five white and untap, I can untap 15 creatures I control and win the game. I'm going to go ahead and move to combat, and I'm sorry, Veggie. Yeah, no, oh. I... Oh, uh, actually, Peachy, you only have a 1-1, one, one, right? I suppose. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm coming at you with a 1-2. Well, I like my lizard, so I will uh, do no blocks, and I will take the one from that. Pass the turn. I thought I might have trouble untapping with Vile with Blackblade Reforged, and then all of that happened, and I'm like, all right, yeah, I guess that's not not threatening if you that's what you can do. I'm going to tap two. I'm going to cast the Reality Chip. It's an 04. I can look at the top card of my library at any time, and as long as it's attached to a creature, I can play lands and cast spells from the top of my library, uh, and I just had to pay three to attach it. So I'm going to tap Val for a uh, total of seven colorless mana. I hope I can do something with it here. I'm going to tap one and use two of it uh, to equip the reality chip. I'll take one from my, yeah, my coast. Let's take a look at the top card here. 
Great. I'm going to play. <laughs> I hit my land drop. <laughs> I will pay two for Farseek. So I'm just going to search for a land and put it in, uh, in play tapped. Nice. Everything pays off. Two lands and two spells go up to three treasures. The threat. The threat. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely her over there. Okay, but for real, we're we're very behind here. Can you can you cut this specifically to a colorless card for five that will immediately uh, take out everything on that side? I believe all is dust costs seven. Uh, uh, that's not bad. <laughs> I'm gonna cast a prismite. Ooh! <gasps> so now I can filter this to uh, other other mana. You're welcome. That that's that's honestly about as good as I could hope for. I think that's all I can do here for now. I will pass. This mana will go away. What's to be done about that? I don't think I can really swing into this, but I can swing around it. No one look at Carlac for a minute. She needs to take her shoes off. <laughs> don't look at her naked feet for just a minute. I'm putting this over here, and I'm going to tap this, and I'm going to put sticky fingers and aura upon Carlac. Uh, she will now have menace, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, I create a treasure token. One, two, three. Uh, to put another enchantment on her, which will be Unquenchable Fury. Whenever this creature attacks, it deals X damage to defending player, where X is the number of cards in hand. Uh, and then when this is put into the gra graveyard from the battlefield, uh, this card will go back to my hand. Because I have Unquenchable Fury out, even if I get blocked, I still get to do like a pretty good chunk of damage, even just on the attack. So that's good enough for me. Oh, and I will put her shoes back on her. <laughs> so, uh, veggie, should I allow the shoes to be put back on? Because I'm worried about that, but like once the shoes are on, then we're done. Here's the thing. I will. Where also we are not listening to you. Well, but nope. this is all my only nope. way of getting rid of this. This is Veggie's choice. <laughs> <laughs> the move that I would take would be to let this thing run uh, and it's, hit us. Because in both ways are super dangerous. Um, so I think I will send Carlac over to Nerd Girl, and since you uh, are the opponent of mine with the most life, um, Carlac will get a counter. So I take eight plus five. Uh, yes, or yeah, it'll be eight from that, and then five from this. So it'll be uh, yeah, eight, and then yeah, the five from the from this. And so then we will also all take. Eight. Eight. No, you, I think, uh, yeah. From Kittis. Yes, yes, yes. Cool, so there is my gold token that I get from attacking Nerd Girl. That's right there. Uh, and then, uh, I believe we have a second combat coming. Actually, actually, you get indestructible and death touch now. You can swing at V. That, that's the thing to do, I guess. <laughs> it, it's kind of got to go somewhere. Before blocks, I'm going to tap three of your creatures. Uh, using we're confronted by robbers and we are going to tap your uh, worst three creatures. Imowen and uh, Aarakocra sneak as blockers. They did. They super did. They get, they get super dead. Um, and then my commander is going to go back to the command zone. I'll, I'll take my punchings where I've earned them. I will, uh, I will pass the turn. All right. I have survived. <laughs> Let's see. On my upkeep, I have the initiative, so I'm going to venture. Create a 4-4 four, four legendary black god horror creature token with death touch. That means that I have completed the Tomb of Annihilation, and uh, my room abilities don't trigger an additional time because I don't have my commander, so you're actually doing me a favor. I'm going to cast a Soul Ring. I'm going to pay 5 for my commander, who we all know and love. Pay 3 and play a Loran of the Third Path. Uh, she is a uh, legendary creature, human artificer, a 2-1 with vigilance. When Loran of the Third Path enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment, and then I can tap, and then you and target opponent each draw a card. I'm also going to make a treasure for your second spell. <laughs> I'm going to uh, use Loran of the Third Path's ETB, target, Swiftfoot Boots. Lightning Greaves. Lightning greaves. Or Lightning Greaves, yes. Fair and reasonable. Move to combat. I'm going to swing everything at Peachy. Oh. <laughs> uh, wow. So I have a 1-1 one, one flyer, a 3-3, three, three, a 6-9 flyer, a 5-7 flyer, 2-4-1 menace, and a 4-4 four, four death touch. Hmm. 
I'm a bit inclined to throw my lizard into the stump grinder to save me from that damage. And then it keeps your two friends alive so that uh, <laughs> we don't- Your two bestest buds yeah. <laughs> will help me in battle. Um, we will clear the way. Or at least I will. <laughs> Veggie will continue doing nothing. Hey, hey, I- <laughs> What did you do? Okay, so I- <laughs> What did you do? <laughs> In a last blaze of glory, I will throw him in front of the uh, the atropol with that touch, and he will get squished. Um, well, and then, we're going to send him to a farm upstate. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah, he's going to a better place, the graveyard. <laughs> I suppose I will begrudgingly take 23 dang damage. Uh, not really much for me to do about that. So I will go down to a brisk seven. And I have a couple things that happen. First off, Radiant Solar has lifelink. So I'm going to gain six. Oh. Brago. Yeah. Has a lot of things that he's going to be doing. Uh, I'm going to choose Loran, Radiant Solar, White Plume Adventurer, uh, Ranger's Hawk, and MON. So they're going to blink. I would like to turbo through the Undercity. Uh, and so I'm going to stack my triggers such that the initiative hits first, resolves first, I should say. Mm -hmm. All of these are doubled. Everyone real comfortable? We're going to be taking on quite a ride, I think. We're going to grab two planes and put them in my hand. I have already played my land for turn. And then I am going to put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. Uh, I'm going to do that twice. And then next, I'm going to trap. Target player loses five life. Oh. And I do that twice. No. Does it have to? <laughs> Pew pew! Mm. You know what? I can't let that go uh, oh. completely. And uh, I, can't, I can't let you get in 10 for free. I will, uh, in my final blaze of glory, I will cast Rakdos Charm. And I will say each creature deals one damage to its controller. Huh. And you have a lot of creatures. I have nine. It's certainly a good thing that I gained six life. It <laughs> yeah. sure is. I'm I'll sorry, take... friends. This is all I can do to help you. Hey, it, that helps. That it's, helps. Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm lowering the 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 bar here. If you guys can get in seven damage after I've fizzled, then maybe you can win. But uh, the Rakdos Charm is all I've got. So I did just get knocked out in a pretty lame way and pretty instantly. But honestly, I've done a lot of damage in the last couple of turns, and I probably deserve it. I will also I take believe. two from that. And then how many creatures do you have? Just one? Just the one. So you'll take one. And then I take 10 and I go squish and now I'm dead. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then I'm going to draw a card twice. Uh, and then I am going to reveal the top 10 cards in my library, put a uh, creature card from among them onto the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. I am actually going to choose Distinguish Con Conjurer. Uh, because it gains me life when uh, creatures enter the battlefield under my control. And I am hurting. Hurting. Uh, and then uh, this gets two plus one plus one counters. And then I do that again. Now, I do still have a venture into the dungeon trigger on the stack, which means that I don't get to go back into the Undercity. Thank God. <laughs> I think because of that, we're going with Aether Channeler. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose one. Uh, I create a 1-1 white bird creature token with flying. I return another target non-land permanent to its, other, uh, to its owner's hand, or I draw a card. It's also a 2-1. Well, at least that's it, and nothing else happens on this turn. Okay, uh, and <laughs> there's nothing else we have to resolve. No, there are definitely not a lot of triggers waiting to be uh, put onto the stack. Nope, not right a now. one. I still have the venture trigger on the stack from any one of these. Uh, and then I have Aether Channeler, which has a Venture Trigger, a Gain Life Trigger, and its own ETB. Uh, I'm going to choose to make a 1-1 Bird. Bird is going to enter, and then that uh, Gain one is going to happen first. Then a Venture from that. Go into the Lost Mine of Fandelver. Uh, I'm going to Scry one twice. Keep that on top. The gain life trigger from that is going to happen. And then I am going to venture. I'm going to create two treasure tokens. If you run out of board space, you're not allowed to put anything else on it. That's yeah. rules of commander. Oh, you should know okay. that as a judge. I, I really <laughs> should. You're right. We will venture trigger on this. Each opponent loses one life and I gain one life twice. Back up to 11, let's go. Uh, Lauren, target the reality chip, mainly because that draws you extra cards. Yes, 
with and allows me to actually use this mana. Yeah, that's gone. And then I'm going to play uh, everyone's favorite jailer, Palace Jailer. Oy. I become the monarch. Yet another thing to put on the board. When Palace Jailer enters the battlefield, I exile target creature and opponent controls until an opponent becomes the monarch. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, exile the Prismite or Prismite. Exiled. It's exiled under the Palace Jailer. Uh, and then I am going to venture twice. So I am going to draw two cards. It's a double venture. Uh, and then I have a creature entering the battlefield, so I will gain a life. End step, Far Traveler. So I could exile something and bring it back. I'm going to exile the Palace Jailer. Uh, and then I'm going to exile your commander. Command zone. Yes. And then I gain the life. Bada bing. I'm going to draw two cards off of Imoen. And that's on your end step, so I will draw for my smuggler's share. Yes. That does not help us. Okay. <laughs> and then I will discard. Okay. Now, pass the turn. It's your turn. I, I thought I was not in this game. <laughs> okay. It's been eons. Uh, on your uh, upkeep, I'm what? going to <laughs> untap, untap my your creatures. Turn again. <laughs> okay. Let me know when I can draw this card. You can now. <gasps> I think I did find the answer. Oh? We're gonna play Marshall Coop for X is five. Create five one one white soldier tokens. If X is five or more, destroy all other creatures. Yo! <laughs> As I say, I'm not sure if you're gonna have much to say about that with all them them tapped uh, mana sources over here. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> There I are have my ways. Okay. Th there, there are a lot of free spells. <laughs> I'd like to in invoke the, format. the, uh, the pretty please clause of don't do that. <laughs> I have not earned any amount of pretty pleases. Let's be real here. I stone cold can't do anything about this. I'm fully tapped out. I have, frankly, probably over committed the board. There's a little bit of hubris there, and I'm certainly feeling the pain on it. Uh, that certainly gets around hexproof as well. And then my guy will die as well. And you'll get more and stuff. And I get some clues. Maybe. You'll Back get in the one. game. <laughs> Was a top deck for the ages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so so when Vernog dies, uh, each player can decide whether they want a clue, and then I get that number plus one additional clue. So I get one for myself. I'll take one. I would certainly <laughs> not like to give you another clue. I will have three clues total. This will resolve, this will die. I am only left with, uh, play a planes for turn, left with five soldiers and a treasure. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I will pass the turn. All right, well, uh, this is totally fine, and <laughs> I, I, I wasn't sure I was making it to this point either. I'm just gonna I pay six and recast my commander, Val, and pass the turn. Upkeep. I'm gonna make a singular treasure token. I'm gonna start off by playing a Skyclave Apparition. When it enters the battlefield, exile up to one target non-land, non-token permanent, I don't control, with converted mana cost four or less. And then when it leaves the battlefield, the exiled card's owner creates an XX blue illusion creature token where X is the converted mana cost of the exiled card. I'm gonna target your commander, Veggie. It is exiled. It will go to the command zone. And then I am also going to play Nadar, Selfless Paladin. Uh, a 3-3 three, three legendary creature dragon knight with vigilance and whenever Nadar selfless paladin enters battlefield or attacks venture into the dungeon other creatures I control get plus one plus one as long as I've completed a dungeon which I have uh, I am going to move forward uh, I do not control my commander so each of you will only lose one life and I will gain one life so I will get an extra treasure token for your second spell and with that I am going to move to my end step and draw a card due to the monarchy. I just cleared the board and V already has this massive thing going on. Thankfully, I have another way to deal with some creatures. Veggie is very far away from doing anything too crazy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tap three and I'm gonna cast Adeline. Uh, Adeline is an X4 vigilant creature where X is the number of creatures I control. And whenever I attack, uh, for each opponent, I create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token that is tapped in attacking uh, that player. Uh, Peachy, 
Thank you for being dead, so this is not as good. Oh yeah, you're welcome. No problem. <laughs> Anytime. Go to combat. Before combat, I'm going to pay three and activate Saravox Tome. Uh, I can pay three, tap exile cards from the top of my library until I exile a non-land card. I may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Activate only if I've completed a dungeon. It's a dungeon map. What? Okay. Well, good. Now you'll be able to get through more dungeons. Yeah. <laughs> now you'll know the way. <laughs> that, yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and attack for five to V, and I will make two humans with Adeline attacking one at each of you. I will block two and take three. I'll okay. take one. And you're taking killing two soldiers? Yes. And then you get both the initiative and the monarchy, which means you get your prismite back. Oh. An opponent took the monarchy. Even when dead? I don't. Yeah. Cool. Really? That is how that works. Uh, and then the initiative will trigger. Uh, so you get to search your land uh, library for a basic land. I'm going to go ahead and pass. Or oh, cooking now. I got a, a clue and a prismite. <laughs> but I think I'm just going <laughs> to chill over here. I'm going to tap five and I'm going to play Future Sight. I play with the top card of my library revealed, and I can play the top card of my library as though it were in my hand. Let's see what we got. It's an instill energy. Well, I don't think I'll be casting Val anytime soon, so I will pay one. I'll hurt myself for one, enchant my Prismite, so I can now... Uh, it has haste, and I can pay uh, zero to untap it once each turn. Big value. <laughs> card on the top is uh, Vivian's Arcbow. Also not helpful to me right now. Yep. Pass the turn. Uh, end step, Ephemerate. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to target Skyclave Apparition. So Ephemerate says that I exile target creature I control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. I'm going to respond with an utter end. I'm going to exile your non-land permanent, the Skyclave Apparition. This gets exiled. Uh, notably, this Ephemerate is actually going to fizzle. Yes, and no so rebounds. I do not get to rebound it, which is super unfortunate. Uh, okay, I'm going to move to my turn. All right, I'm going to start off by paying three to uh, venture into the dungeon. So I'm going to complete Lost Mine of Fandelver and draw a card. I'm going to play a Fabled Passage. I'm going to sacrifice that to grab a Plains. Are you going to win, Veggie? Oh, I got this. I'm going to pay four and play a Seasoned Dungeoneer. When it enters the battlefield, I take the initiative. I would like to take this back, please. Uh, and so then I'm going to search for an island and shuffle. Uh, I am going to play a Preston the Vanisher. Uh, it's a 2-5. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under my control, if it was not cast, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's an 0-1 white illusion. And that was your second spell. I'll grab a treasure. I am going to evoke solitude by exiling a Felidar Guardian. Solitude has Flash, Lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, exile up to one target creature. That creature's controller gains life equal to its power. I would like to target Adeline. So she's exiled forever. And then you gain six life. Four, five, six. Right. And then Solitude is going to be sacrificed. I am going to move to combat. Proceed. I'm going to hit you for three, but I will venture into the Undercity with this and give it two plus one plus one counters. All right, I'll use two treasures to untap two creatures, make a citizen and draw a card. Block with a human token. Sure. Yeah, got to keep that citizen around. He's cute. He's cute. <laughs> and he's cuter than the human. I like his little hat. I am also going to play a Watcher for Tomorrow. It has Hideaway. So this creature enters the battlefield tapped. When it does, look at the top four cards of my library, exile one face down, then put the rest on the bottom of my library. And then when Watcher for Tomorrow leaves the battlefield, I put the exiled card into its owner's hand. I'm going to exile this under and then move to end step. I don't have anything. Pass the turn. I want to end the game. I just don't know how <laughs> is the problem. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, attack V for five. Uh, I am going to certainly block three of them and take two. Okay. Uh, I will kill the citizen, human, and one of the soldiers. <gasps> How That's dare you? Can, you? can you leave the citizen? Doesn't this care about citizens? No. no. 
Oh, <laughs> then okay. Uh, I don't. I don't care. I'm gonna blow them all up anyway. It's fine. I'm oh, just kidding. I'm gonna go ahead and cast a necrotic hex. Each player sacrifices six creatures. I will create six tapped two-two black zombies. Seems good. <laughs> oh, uh, notably, you dealt damage to me. So before that, you will actually take the initiative, and you can either put two plus one plus ones out on target creature, which I presume not, uh, or scry two. I'll scry two. That sounds nice. The card that I exiled with Watcher uh, will go into my hand. And that will be the end of my turn. We're I'm <laughs> I'm just giving Veggie so much time to figure it out. <laughs> you see, you say you're trying to end the game, and then you're stopping me from ending the game. That's true. Draw. I did not have any answers for what was going on there, but this is perfect. My deck is designed to play a whole bunch of things all in one turn, so I think I'm in the best position to get back into this thing. The card on top is Magus of the Candelabra. Oh, so, spicy. yeah, we're going to cast that. It's a one, two. I can pay X and tap it to untax, uh, untap X target lands. Would work really well if you had a bunch of colorless mana that you can't use for spells from your hand. Uh, <laughs> card on top is an island. We're going to play island as land for turn. Next card is Sarith the Viper's Fang. That's a card that is good, but not in this situation. Might as well cast it, though. I'm going to tap one, two, three, four, uh, and I'll take one damage from the Yavamaya Coast to cast Sarah, the Viper's Fang. Other tapped creatures you control have Death Touch. Other untapped creatures you control have Hexproof, and I can pay one and tap it to untap another target creature or land I control. Card on top is a Thought Vessel. Well, I, whatever. What I have is not going to stop anything. I'm going to pay two. I'm going <laughs> to cast that Thought Vessel. I'm going to get a clue. Or, I'm sorry, a treasure. Card on top is a forest. I will pass my turn. Well, that certainly does things. Eldrazi Displacer. It is a 3-3 Eldrazi with Devoid. This card has no color, but I can pay two generic and a colorless to exile another target creature, then return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. Notably, it has to have colorless sources, which is why there's a wastes in here. <laughs> it's so sick. <laughs> I'm going to pay seven. Uh, to play my commander. I'm going to make a treasure. Pay three for a circuit mender. When it enters the battlefield, I gain two life. Uh, and then when it leaves the battlefield, I draw a card. Uh, so I'm going to move to end step. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and spend two and cast Kabira Takedown. I'm going to deal six damage to it because I uh, it'll deal damage based on the number of creatures I control. My commander will now cost nine. Worth it. Since it is still my main phase two, I'm going to crack the treasure and play a talisman of progress. And then I'm going to pass the turn. We got a swinging zombie army. I, I, th I think we are going to have to. I'm going to crack a clue. <laughs> I'm going to crack another clue. V, 12 damage. Yeah. I'm going to declare two blocks. All right. I'm going to lose two, and you're going to take eight. eight. Cast this creature, and I will go ahead and just untap one of my creatures to make a citizen, and then they will all untap on Veggie's turn anyway. And I'll pass the turn. All right. Untap the rest of the zombies. I just have to hit V one time to get them out of the game, but my only removal in my hand right now is Reality Shift, which is just going to make another Manifest creature, so I can't get through. Card on top is an island, gonna play an island for turn. Card on top is a forest, I hate you. <laughs> um, pay two, crack this clue finally, draw a card. Card on top is a Shore Up. I'm gonna pay one, I'm going to uh, Shore Up Sarath. Uh, so it gets plus one plus one and hexproof until end of turn. I untap it. All right. Well, I'll put the down. I'll put down the thing that will get me there. Not now, but for sure next turn. Uh, I'll pay six and cast Steel Hellkite. It's a five five flyer. Uh, that's the important part. But I can also pump it up plus one uh, for two, or I can pay X to destroy each non-land permanent with mana value X, whose controller was dealt damage by the Steel Hellkite this turn. You can only do it once per turn. 
we're just gonna have to hang out and hope that we lie uh, we live i'll pass the turn i will discard a land i usually try to make it easier for people to win but i don't know i was feeling a little not myself today and in fairness you didn't make it difficult <laughs> i'm going to cast my commander yet again for nine mana let's see if it actually stays this time i'm gonna venture into the dungeon and kill Veggie because oh, I have twice? my commander now, so I have double room abilities. So I'm going to pew pew. How much damage yes. does it do? It's target player loses five life twice. That's it for me. I'm out of here. <laughs> okay. Before my end step, I'm going to activate Eldrazi Displacer to exile Circuit Mender, bring it to the battlefield tapped. I'm going to gain two life. I'm also going to draw a card from it leaving the battlefield. I'm going to. Move to my end step. Mm -hmm. uh, Far Traveler is going to exile target tapped creature I control, which means I get to gain another two life and I draw another card. And then I get to draw uh, two cards off of Emoen. I drew a Paragon Drake. All I need is to survive. I need Nerd Girl to not see that she has me dead on board. So still dead on board? You'll have to find out. Finish it out. Let's okay. see. On the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. So we'll see if you have it. This is some damage. Uh-huh. It is certainly some damage. Uh, I am going to block three zombies. Okay. And... Free spells? Four free spells. Oh. Yes. No, I, I'm, <laughs> no. I'm absolutely going to die. Ooh. I wasn't able to uh, fight until the very end, but I did get to do some combat. I would have liked to have done uh, a lot more punching than I did already do, but we will have to save that for another day. Mana Traders has always been the ideal Magic Online rental service, but now with their new Commander rental package, getting into the game has never been easier. And with our discount code and link down below in the description, you'll get an additional 10% off. And once you're signed up, you can go ahead, get onto Magic Online, join our Discord, and play in some games with us during our Magic Online Commander Nights. Nerd Girl saw the line, which like, to be fair, we can kind of expect. But I was still hoping. That being said, the real friends are the dungeons we sacked along the way. I'm not gonna lie, the deck didn't exactly play out how I intended, but we got the win and only one of us could make it out of the dungeon. Cool Stuff Inc. is the best place to pick up anything from sealed product to singles. Make sure to use our brand new code MNG5 for 5% off your order. I thought I was in a pretty good position a couple of points in that game, but each time my deck kind of struggled to get something going and I just faded into the background. We'd like to thank our patrons. Without your support, these episodes would not be possible. And with your support, they could be extra possible. For the month of December, we are bringing you weekly episodes, and we would love to continue doing that. We just need your help. So if you would like to help us hit our goal, then head on over to our Patreon, unlock exclusive perks like signed tokens, spell table games with us, even submit deck lists for us to play here on the show, and you'll be helping us make this show weekly indefinitely. And you know what to do. If you liked the video, click like. And if you really liked it, and you did, click subscribe. That's all for today. We'll see you next time on Decked, Decked Out. Out.